Okay, and just take a moment to look at that cartoon. I think it is unfortunately reflective of our times today. So I thought I would do um, a little bit on what are logic models. Probably most of you know them. Why are they important in systematic reviews of intervention and for equity? And just give a brief overview of types of logic models. Now the second one is the most important, so I'll spend most time on that. What is a logic model? Well, um, and, and first, I come from a social sciences background, so I love logic models um, and causal models. And I, I was worked in epidemiology for years um, and with causal models. So to me, you don't do anything, any kind of research without first having a logic model or a causal model, theory of change. Um, so they're graphical representations of the mechanism of the intervention and the way it in which it has its effect. And basically, they're not only the ways in which it has its effect, but the other aspects and the context and the child equity considerations that affect the, the effectiveness of the intervention. And they make it explicit. They, they force you to think through your intervention before you do your research or your systematic review. And they, they force you to think through these mechanisms and to make it make it overt in the proposal for the systematic review. Um, they have been used for years in program evaluation, but only in the last 20 for systematic reviews. And I think they're they're very prevalent in systematic reviews right now. And I used it in the first review, the school meals review that Vivian and I worked on together. Um, and it was a great help in identifying what equity factors were, were important, what aspects of the um, context were important, what aspects in the implementation and process of the intervention, the school meals, was, were important. Okay, other people use conceptual model. That's the one that I've always used. Um, Theory of change is used often in international development. And I'm not as familiar with these terms, but analytical model and they, a concept map. And gee, this looks familiar. <laughs> okay, only I changed it a little bit. Um, this is from a review that we did on supplementary feeding for improving the health of disadvantaged infants and children. So it's explicitly focused, equity focused, focused on children that are in lower income families in both high and middle income countries. And we'll go back to the equity components of it later. And Peter already explained the intervention, the implementation process. But I will explain the equity factors in a little bit. Why do we use logic models? Well, as I said, they help us unpack what is actually going on in the intervention. And they help us unpack that before we start the review. They help us identify what is important, what factors in the implementation might um, affect the intervention, make it less, more or less um, effective. For example, in the implementation process, while I was reading about school meals, I learned about this thing called substitution. And that is where um, families who are really pressed to get enough food, especially in lower income countries, get enough food for their families, often give the child who receives meals at school or at preschool a little less to make up for the fact that he has received those meals. And that helps them spread the food budget around. Now, it, it's an interesting balance because it some, it's, helps the younger children in the family, but the children who are getting the meals get less impact than they should. So it, it's a tough call. And then there's, a, in the implementation, acceptability, nutritional adequacy, supervision, or feeding center. We set out these before, and we added a few um, as we went through the review, both reviews. And as I said, they go beyond the black box of interventions. They help us really unpack that intervention, how it works, 
why it works, for whom, and how, and and how. Um, interventions. Why do we use them? Because interventions are often complex, and the one the systematic reviews I do are on super complex interventions. They have multiple arms. They have different impacts. They not only, for example, school and preschool meals not only impact child growth, but to a greater extent, they impact on cognition and academic achievement, and for young children, motor development. So they have multiple, multiple impacts, and a little bit on family food security. And um, we want to understand those equity factors, like SES, gender, and religion. And logic models help us to specify these factors, help us to, before you do a systematic review, you do a lot of reading on the topic, and you learn which equity factors are important in that contest. For example, SES is almost always of importance. Um, we, Peter eloquently talked about the equity gap. Um, SES is almost always important. But in lower and middle income countries, gender and sex is especially important because in some countries, women are not treated as well as they should be. They are not, they are placed second, they are second class citizens. So women's education is often seen as the way to bring those women up and to bring those countries up. Um, I've heard um, quotes saying that women's education is the most important thing a country can do to improve its social circumstances. So when they're useful in systematic reviewing, I would say almost always, um, except when there's a straightforward path from intervention to outcome. And then the kind of reviews I do, the public health, the epi, the um, social reviews, there's, you cannot do it without a logic model. And the more complex the intervention, the more necessary a logic model becomes. And I don't think I need to do that one. Um, okay, and here is the equity considerations. The, the, um, I love this little diagram. Um, I saw someone else give a diagram, a talk on it, similarly. So uh, equality is everybody has an equal leg up, but the short person, the short assuming child, needs a bigger leg up so he cannot reach the fruit. This is equity when each is treating, treated according to his needs. Um, so logic models help us identify these considerations. They help us identify whether SES is important, and I, as I said, it almost always is, whether sex and gender are important, some of the other progress factors, and, and I gave the example of disability as a factor that can lead to inequities in treatment, in care, and in um, life chances. So here is the diagram again. I don't know why I did this. Um, so, as Peter said, there's inequities can arise in the child-specific context. He might have a baseline nutritional status that's low. He or she might be um, unequally treated because of her gender, his or her gender. Um, the child prefers certain foods. And then there's food security. In the family context, there's the family SES. Um, there's household size. And there's intra-household food distribution. As I said, sometimes in some cultures, the male gets, gets the food first, then the male children, and then the females. And so that is important to know when you're designing these programs so that you can give more to compensate for some of these distributional issues. Now, it's not every country. It's not every low- and middle-income country, but there are some where it's prevalent. Um, and then there's a community context that also has many e equity factors. There are attitudes towards feeding, towards um, lower income people, um, attitudes towards girls. How does the society treat girls and women? Um, community economics are important. Can they support and sustain a feeding program? And then there's uh, social cohesion. If the community can come together to work together on a program, 
it has a much better chance of working. And that all leads to the implementation process and, and the factors work through them. So supplementary food might work really well, um, and actually it works best for lower income children. Thank goodness, as Peter said. Um, those, those are the children that need to be brought up more. Um, so, but substitution can affect it. Other equity, can, other equity factors like inter-household distribution, less going, less going to the girls affect it. And then finally you get um, physical health, psychological, psychosocial health, and then it leads to better child development and better life chances for the children. There's another one of these um, graphic representations of equity. There's equality, and again, the child and the shorter people cannot see the ball game. They, can't, they don't have equal opportunities, um, but with equity, they do. Everybody is given opportunities according to what they need. So logic models add to the systematic review process. Um, they help, first of all, in deciding on your inclusion exclusion criteria. Who are you aiming your review at? Who, are, who is the intervention aimed at? Who can most benefit from it? They help with a search strategy, and they also help in, this is very important in equity-focused reviews, planning the subgroup analysis. You do analysis by SES, or in our case, by baseline nutritional status. You do um, analysis by gender, and those are critical to find out whether um, they, they work equally well or better for girls than for boys. And in the review I'm doing now on community food security interventions, um, analysis of SNAP programs and women, infants, and children programs in the states are often broken down by race. It's an unfortunate fact that in the states, races, people of um, minority races do worse than whites, white middle class people. And so we want to, those programs to bring them up more. And it also helps in knowledge translation, structuring the results. Do I have a minute yet? I think so. I'll take it. <laughs> um, so how are logic models developed? They can be differentiated by a priori, and almost all logic models, in order to plan the review properly, need to be developed a priori. Um, but the a pri ones that are really a priori are as close to the onset of the systematic review as possible, and it doesn't change with stages of the systematic review. Now, I prefer the stage ones in which logic models are flexible depending on what you learn. You build your logic model at first, you identify the factors that are important to study, and you might come up with other factors through, as you go through the systematic review process. Um, so a stage specify points at which the inter new information from the review is expected to result in changes to the model. And it's flexible, but it's transparent because you've already pre-specified the, the stages. You don't just change the logic, mo logic model as you learn one new thing. You change it at certain points in the review. And there are some references I used in the presentation. <laughs>